this project, I'm going to be analyzing two characters from Como Agua para Chocolate. The first character we are going to analyze is Tita, which is the main character of the film. The entire film is basically showcasing Tita's character breaking away and gaining independence from her mother, who has a tyrannical hold on her and her life. Tita is the youngest child, and therefore, according to their family tradition, she has a destiny predetermined that she must not have a family, not marry, and not find love because she needs to take care of her mother until her mother grows old and dies. I had to take care of my siblings a lot growing up, and so I understand the feeling of not being equal with your siblings and everyone around you. Tita is also known for her emotions. She feels a lot, and she shares her emotions with others through the mystical realism of putting it into the food and having everyone else feel the emotions she is feeling. Now, I don't know if I'm that magical, <laughs> but I do have a lot of emotions. It has both helped and held me back in life, so I genuinely connect with that. Um, my first name is Kyra. I used to be called Kyra growing up if that tells you anything. <laughs> She's also very nurturing. When she breastfeeds and nurtures her sister's son, despite the fact that she knows everyone around her would disapprove, she did what was best for the child, and I really admire that. Um, there is a scene in the movie where her sister and Pedro move away, and they take their son with them. And as a mother who breastfed both of my children, I genuinely could feel her emotions as they were taking him away. I understand how distressing those moments can be, and in that segment of the film, I felt the most connected to Tita compared to the entirety of the film. It is emotionally and physically taxing to be torn away from somebody who you've built such a nurturing parental relationship with. The next character we're going to talk about is Nansha. She is a maid who essentially raises Tita from a baby into an adult because Tita's mom, Mama Elena, isn't really a mother. One of the, my favorite things about Nancha is she showcases the fact that you don't have to biologically birth someone in order to be that emotional, maternal support figure that they need in their life. She also represents carrying on culture and traditions from your ancestors not in the same way that Mama Elena carries on traditions. Mama Elena carries on traditions that are meant to box you in and give you boundaries. Nancha gives Tita traditions that allow her to have an outlet for her emotions and connect her better with her ancestors. I think mystical realism is just connecting to that side of yourself in the past. I don't necessarily believe that if you cook something you can make a whole bunch of people cry or die from farting but I do believe that there is a lot of intention that is put through actions and Nancha is the one that teaches Tita these things um, which are from her culture as a native Mexican. I relate to Nancha as a mother. She shows unconditional love and life lessons to Tita throughout her entire life. I also relate to her on the fact that she takes so much effort and care in teaching Tita the cultural, ancestral traditions that will only help her in the future. And then Tita goes on to teach those to her daughter, and her daughter teaches it to the person who's narrating the entire movie. It was such a beautiful, lovely little circle ending. And that is why the characters I resonate with most are Tita and Nancha from Como Agua para Chocolate.